Good day, good day, good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Talk to Me in Afrikaans. Now, this is a bit of a more lighthearted topic. I think we should do it because it's just going to be fun and all of that, and it'll work out. It's just a little bit of a lighthearted, lighthearted bit of look at how Afrikaans literal translations can go wrong. It's probably going to be a two-parter. Let's... Uh, see how that goes, and without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So one of the best translations, right, is this one, right? An Afrikaans. Oh, hell. That's a camel horse. Or a camel pad. I need to confirm what I'm looking at. Yes, camel horse or a camel pad. So basically, that camel is not really camel, but that's the closest we'll get to it. And part is horse, right? Camel part. That is, what do you think? What do you think that is? What do you think that is? I think camel refers to its color. Yes? No? Let me surprise you. Giraffe! Ha <laughs> ha! Ha! And then, obviously, I'm just going to do this one just because of Camille. Uh, camel, as in in the desert, is a Camille. So how do you get from two humps and a horse-looking thing, you take something that they, that's got two humps, and it's, you know, horse-looking roughly, very roughly, you combine those two words, camel and horse, and you get your off. Don't know, that is, that is how, that's how Afrikaans gets to the things. Um, Afrikaans is a funny language like this. Now a sea cow, right? The words technically is there. Sia is comprised, comprised of the two words si and cow, which is sia kui. Sia kui, right? What the hell do you think a sea cow is? So think about it. A sia kui is a creature that's big and is close to or most of the time in water. Oh, hippo. So don't ask me how they get it, because sea and cow, now it's a hippo, right? Now, in Afrikaans, now this is exactly, you're, you're reading that and go, robot? Yes, and in Afrikaans, it's robot. What the hell could a robot be in Afrikaans? And it's also a common South Africanism, um, for example, to use this sentence in English, you stop at the robot, take a left. Yes, traffic light. Yeah, traffic light. Oh, this one is quite easy. I just need to see what the hell it is. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's what it is. Iron pig. Literally, or in Afrikaans, we've got Easter, which is iron. And fark, which is pig. Okay. Easter, fark. You're like, what the hell is an iron pig? What could it be? Well, let me tell you something. It's not what you think it was. Porcupine. <laughs> oh, this one. This one is literally stock. Which is stick. It's comprised of two words, stock and parki, which is a small horse. Stock parki combined, and you're not gonna believe it. You're not gonna believe it. And I don't know why. There must be a reason why Afrikaans chose those two words to explain hobby. Right? 
Ghost breath. What the hell? Ghost freaking breath. It's two words turned into one. Ghost and breath. Spook and awesome. Combined makes... Let me just do that. I have a bit of a continuous thing going. Makes... Believe it or not. Believe it or not. Right? Believe it or not. Candy floss is ghost breath. Or cotton candy is ghost breath in Afrikaans. Spook in awesome. Now this. Mouth letter. Right? Now back. Which is sort of a crude way, crude way to refer to your mouth. Right? Back. Right? It's sort of a crude way to refer to your mouth you usually in Afrikaans the term is usually used when you're referring to animals having something in their mouths to animals mouths like the haunts back the dog's mouth um, not a lot these days anymore but back in the day um, it was sort of like especially If, you were to, if I was to say it as a kid while talking about another person, I would get the ever-living hell slapped out of me. So, but now, we take this word, back briefy. So it's a mouth letter, right? I wonder if you can figure this out. Mouth letter, it's pretty damn easy. Let me explain it to you. I'm sending a back briefy. Yeah, it's a voice note. It's not that funny, but back briefy is a voice note. Oh, this one. Fidget sock, right? Fidget sock. Krivel. Don't worry about these words. It's just funny words, okay? Krivel kos. Right? Literally, krivel is fidget, like when you're fidgeting, you're... You're fidgeting, krivel, that word over there, krivel, and then kos is a sock, right? And that is, essentially, there's no actual English word for it, a very fidgety, a fidgety toddler, toddler, or fidgety person. That's essentially it. Now, the word derives, for those of you wanting to know, the word derives um, from the fact that toddlers are often in booties or socks, and they're vegetary. They're, they're generally very fidgety or busy. Busy body? No, it's not a busy body. Um, so toddlers are usually in boots or in socks, and they're very busy. And that is literally what you, we call them, fidget sock or krivel kos, right? Krivel kos. Now, the next one, there's not a lot left, but I am going to turn it into a two-parter because, to be perfectly honest, to be perfectly honest, I have no idea currently what to focus on. I need to take a step back and see what I could do for the Afrikaans videos. That is the only reason why these videos are a bit shorter. The next one is going to be even more shorter. But um, that is why I'm going to... I'm going to stop it there and go towards the next video. Because, you know, I know... I need to find an interesting thing that I can teach about the Afrikaans language. And if you've got hints or if you've got questions and whatever and you want me to do a video about it, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll look into it. Um... But on that note, I want to say thank you, everybody, for watching. And uh, as always, hug some you love, tell them you love them. And until next time, have a good one.